This is my second project using my mostly printed CNC machine. Conventional wisdom says you should build up your skills with small test projects. I subscribe to a different philosophy that I use when learning a new programming language. Identify a need and learn the tools as you work towards meeting that need. The need in this case was to communicate our community's website URL with a sign to go at the entrance of our subdivision. I had seen sign projects using white PVC boards that were painted and then carved, resulting in very legible weatherproof signs, perfect for my needs. I created my design in my favorite vector editor, Inkscape, then was off to the big box store to buy the board and the paint. Here's where I ran into a snag. The sign needed to be 35 inches wide, while the workspace on my NPCNC is 19 by 19 inches. I would need to tile my project. Now there are some good videos out there on the basics of tiling, and I've linked to them below. The ones that I've found, though, use the built-in tiling two-path features of software such as Vectrix Aspire and vCarve Pro. I, on the other hand, am using Estelcam, which as far as I can tell doesn't have this feature. This video is on how I tiled my job in Inkscape before importing it into Estelcam to create the toolpaths. Here's the full design. I have it oriented in the Y direction since the layout of my CNC allows pass-through in that direction. The concepts we'll discuss will work just as well with designs oriented in the X direction. For this job, I've set the default units to inches in document properties. I've also set the page size to the size of the PVC board that I cut to size. I've also made sure that rulers are set to visible in the view menu. I decided to use 18-inch tiles to stay well within the 19-inch limit of my machine. I start by setting a horizontal guideline at the 18-inch mark. To set a guideline, simply click on the top ruler and drag down to the approximate location. To precisely set the location, Double-click on the guideline and enter the value. For reference, I set another guideline 18 inches above the first one, at the 36-inch mark. If I proceeded at this point, I would wind up with three tiles. But by positioning my graphic, I can cut that down to two. If I move the graphic all the way down, it falls well between the two tiles. Notice, though, that the transition between tiles falls right across the W. We could split the graphic at this point, but we can simplify things if we move the graphic up just a little. Next, we'll locate the dowel holes. We start by creating a circle. The dowels I'll be using are 3 8 inches, so that's what we'll set the diameter of the circle to. Now we'll position the circle on the workpiece. We'll choose an X position of 1 inch and a Y of 1 quarter inch. The X position isn't critical as long as it's outside the graphic. I chose 1 quarter inch for the Y so that we'll still be well within the 19 inch limit of my workspace after creating the next set of locator holes 18 inches above, as we'll see in a bit. I'll duplicate this hole and move it to 9 and 7 eighths inches in the X so it will be one inch from the right edge of the 11 and a quarter inch board. In actuality, 
There is no need for these two holes to be centered in the X direction unless you want to also engrave on the other side of the board, which I did not do in this project. I'll now group these two circles, duplicate them, and move the duplicates 18 inches in the Y to 18 and 1 quarter inches. The toolpath for the bottom two holes will be through the sign and into the waste board. The top two holes only need to go through the sign. Now on to creating the two tile pieces. I'll start by ungrouping my vectors. Now I'll select my Edit Path by Nodes tool. I select a vector and double click near where I want to split it to place a new node. With this node selected, I set the Y location of the node to 18 inches. I repeat the process every place a vector intersects with the tile boundary. I now select the nodes that I just created and break the path at those nodes. This would be a good time to save my project. Next, select segments above each node in turn and delete the segment. Still using the Edit Path by Node tool, I select any remaining nodes at the top and delete those. Finally, delete any other vectors within that tile. Make sure you do not delete the two locator holes. Save your work and give it a new descriptive name. Load the previous document back in. The nodes have already been created and the paths broken, so we just need to delete the segments in the bottom tile. We can also delete any locator holes as they are only cut in the Tile 1 toolpaths. One final step is needed before we save. Select and group everything that is left and align it with the bottom edge of the page, making sure not to change the horizontal orientation. Save this with a descriptive name. 
Create your toolpaths for each tile separately in your favorite CAM program, such as Estelcam. Run the toolpaths for your first tile, reposition your work, and then run the second tile. 